Hi, Todd here from Urban Sound Studio. Today, we're going to take a look at quantizing our audio in Pro Tools using Beat Detective. Now, over the years, Beat Detective has gotten a bit of a bad rap, but honestly, it's because people aren't using it properly. So we're going to start with the basics, learning what is Beat Detective and how do you use it. We'll start by taking a look at individual tracks, and then we'll look at using it on multiple tracks. You'll find that in the end, it could be a lifesaver. It'll tighten up your audio, it'll clean up your sessions, and it'll save you a ton of time. But for now, let's jump in and learn the basics. We have a MIDI drum loop here that is in perfect time. Let's add some other instruments. The groove isn't too tight, and if we look closely, we could see that our transients aren't lining up too well with the beats. The tambourine and shaker were recorded in eight measure regions and duplicated, but the bass was recorded as one continuous region. Let's focus on the tambourine. Beat Detective usually does best if you start one measure before and extend one measure after the region you want to adjust. So let's select from measures 4 to 14. In the event menu, we will select Beat Detective. First, click Capture Selection to identify the region we are affecting. Double check your start and end bar as well as the time signature as it isn't always properly captured. You will also want to identify what rhythmic notes the region will contain. If you need triplets, you could check the three box to the right. Then click Analyze to determine where our transients are located. We could select to identify bars, beats, or subbeats. In this case, we are selecting beats since we're performing on beats two and four. Bring the sensitivity slider up until all of your transients are identified. The groove template extraction allows you to be able to match different grooves within Beat Detective. We won't be using that today. Instead, let's click Clip Separation and separate our region at each of the transient markers. You can see that we now have separate regions located at each transient. Next, go to Clip Conform, which will place our regions on the closest beat. We can select to conform to certain grooves or select Standard to conform straight to the grid. Even when selecting Standard, you could determine the Strength, Swing, and Exclude Within, but for now we're going to keep our quantizing straight to the grid. Let's hit Conform. You can see that the beat perfectly conformed to the grid, but we now have gaps in our audio. Go to Edit Smoothing. We can select to fill these gaps or fill the gaps and then add a crossfade. Let's add a crossfade of 6 milliseconds and then hit the Smooth button. Our first crossfade looks perfect right before the transient. Our second crossfade looks early, but if we look closely, we'll see that Beat Detective was smart and made sure to put the crossfade at a zero crossing point so there isn't a dual hit or transient smear from the overlap of audio. The same thing also applies at the next edit point. At this point, our audio is in great shape. So select the entire region and hit Shift Option 3 to consolidate the region into one region. And you can now duplicate the region by hitting Command D to have two perfectly performed regions in time with our MIDI drums. Let's do this again, but this time try it with the shaker. Once again, select an extra measure in front and pass the region for the best results when using Beat Detective. Capture the selection, check the bar start, end, and time signature. Hit Analyze. We can stay selected to beats as these always fall on the beat. But let's adjust our sensitivity to match the performance. Separate the clips and hit Conform. Let's add another step. While our clips are separated, let's adjust our clip gain to help level match any regions that are too loud or underperformed. This will help for a more consistent sound when we mix. Now that we adjusted our gain, let's select the beginning and end of the regions and smooth them with crossfades. We can delete the regions at the beginning that weren't needed and then consolidate our edits into one region. Once we do, duplicate the region for a perfect performance in terms of timing.
Now, let's listen to the bass. The bass is playing eighth notes, so let's change our grid to visualize that better. We can hear and see that the bass is not locked tightly to the grid, so let's clean this up. Since our bass region starts and ends on downbeats and stays within the same time signature, we could just use Beat Detective across the entire region. We'll capture the selection and check our bar, start, end, and time signature. However, this time we need to specify that the region contains eighth notes. Let's analyze, but we also need to specify that the region contains subbeats. Now, let's separate our regions and take a close look. You could see that in some regions there was a bit of audio right before the impact of the transient. Let's undo the separation and make use of the trigger pad. We'll try a 5 millisecond pad, which allows a bit of an offset for any pre-ringing or swells into the transient so it doesn't get lost in the edit. We could see that 5 milliseconds didn't capture all of it. Let's hit undo and try 10 milliseconds. We could see that 10 milliseconds did the job. Typically, values of 5 to 15 milliseconds will be correct. However, in some cases, such as our shaker and tambourine, we're using 0 milliseconds. You will need to listen and look at your performance and then use your best judgment. Now, let's conform our clips and smooth them out. Everything looks and sounds great, so let's consolidate the regions and clean up the ends. Let's remind ourselves of the audio before and then with Beat Detective applied. Now we took a look at how to use Beat Detective on individual tracks, but let's dive a little deeper and see how we can use Beat Detective across multiple tracks, especially in the most common use case, which is across multiple drums. Listen to our raw drums against a click track. We could see and hear that our transients do not line up tightly with the grid. Since all of the drums work together and have bleed, we need to process them as a group with all of the same edits. Let's pull all the regions back a measure to have a measure in front. We could also see that there's a measure of 2-4 in this performance, so let's make an edit there so that we only work on the 4-4 four, four regions together. Now, you'd be inclined to select all of your regions in Open Beat Detective. Capture the selection, check your start, end, and time signature, and hit Analyze. While this can be done, it'll typically give you more transients due to cymbal hits and other sounds picked up by the overheads. Therefore, another method is to only select the kick and snare when capturing and analyzing your regions. This will typically give you more pronounced transients on which to base your edits. Once you do, you could then select the other regions you want to affect, but Beat Detective will only use the analysis from the kick and the snare. Let's set a trigger pad of 10 milliseconds. We will separate the regions, conform them, and smooth them out. The result is much better and locks into the click and grid. Now, let's address that 2-4 bar on its own. It is the same process, but make sure that when you capture the selection, the time signature reads 2-4. Once you do, follow the Analyze, Sensitivity, Separation, Conform, and Smoothing steps, and then you're set. Now, let's apply this to the following 4-4 measures. Once again, just make sure to double-check the time signature when capturing this section. Once you do, follow the Analyze, Sensitivity, Separation, Conform, and Smoothing steps, and then you're set. Once you get the hang of these steps, processing within Beat Detective becomes fairly quick and easy. 
When you are done, select and consolidate the regions. Let's remind ourselves of the before and then with Beat Detective Applied. Thanks for watching. Do you have any additional questions or do you use Beat Detective and have a tip you can share? If so, please leave a comment in the chat below. And as always, please help support this channel by liking the video and hitting subscribe.